Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for tomorrow from a betting perspective. Um, I did a video, uh, an interview with this uh, LOL's uh, podcast, and uh, you know, talking about the deficiencies in, in tout world and in uh, DFS world specifically. And you know, my whole idea is that people should really, uh, you know, when they put out content, or like people, me at least, uh, should should really focus on, on teaching. And, and, and focus on, I don't know, every video that I put out, I would like people to learn something, you know, whether it be how to think about gambling, whether how to think about psychology, how to think about anything. And that's kind of my mission, pretty much every video I do. And you know, as I went through this fighting with people yesterday in the, in the, in the podcast, I was suggesting that nobody does this, but everybody just kind of just, gives people picks and whatever, but doesn't really get into what to, how to apply them and how to, how to think about things. But anyway, uh, it just kind of like got me re re-energized, you know, to just to continue to do what I want to do. And that, be, that is, you know, every video I put out, that's my check, my check mark. You know, when I finish it, I think that I actually teach anybody something. Um, if not, I'm just not going to upload it. Um, and when I say teach someone, I don't mean just like, who's going to win today. I really don't know who's going to win today. It's going to be how to how to analyze this stuff in general, and I don't know. Anyway, again, what we are trying to accomplish in UFC uh, wagering is not uh, is not out analyze the public. In other words, I don't purport to be able to have you know overcome like a sixty cent money line edge, which is what's priced into these lines. Um, but what I found is that when you have a, a system like this, like a construct where there is big. What you might be able to do is, is get a sense for where the value is based on public psychology and based on, on content, based on where just kind of overall momentum comes from. And you know, this is a skill that I, I developed all through my life, you know, all types of gambling from the stock market, right, where I made most of my money to other things. And I feel as though you can learn that type of thing. You can learn that type of thinking if you learn to be a contrarian. Um, and, and in doing so, you can actually stumble across, you know, good value without even looking for it, you know, by, by eliminating what you know is bad value. Now, again, like in, and, and the way the MMA world works, you know, and a lot of people bet on the fights and a lot of people bet on props. And because these fights have a full week to kind of gather information, you know, people and, and group thing kind of take over and, People settle on usually a very binary outcome, meaning it's not just one fighter wins or another fighter wins. People just presume that one fighter will win this way or another fighter will win that way. And, and they, they analyze these fights to death and they settle on these two outcomes where in, 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 a, in, a, in a sport filled with chaos, um, those most likely outcomes end up being the wagers that you are just not allowed to bet because those are the but that's what's being pounded. And what I found is that if you fade those, you could almost bet anything else blind. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, there's still VIG associated with everything else. You know, it's not that easy. But if you could start thinking about things in this way, uh, you're going to be, I'm telling you, you're going to be a much better MMA wager and you're going to just be a much better, I don't know, I don't thinker in general. And that's that's what I'm kind of getting at here. So this is what we do. I mean, we go through we uh, we go through the fights, and 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 we've already near the end of the week. So I've already absorbed like what groupthink is and and where people have settled, and I review what that is, and then figure out well you know, that that you can't bet that. <laughs> and so we find other things that may be you know not quite as likely, but is just ignored to such a degree that you have to presume that there's some inherent good value in there. So. We're going to go through this and we're going to go through the rules here. And there are going to be actually two fights that I don't even know the odds on yet, but I'm still going to, still going to give you them. Um, so here are the rules. There are 14 fights on the card and we're going to bet something every single fight. And the God, again, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Um, in addition to that, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And of course that's not the best money management system in the world. We don't care about that either. Um, we're going to be betting 180 so for me you know, one unit is 180 and uh you know 10 times high go us um 
And the one thing that I will say is that the main event, what we always do is presume that we are going to lose the first uh, X amount of fights on the card. And so whatever we lose, we presume we're going to lose. We're going to try to make that all back in the main event. So because there are 14 fights, we are going to, um, we are going to play uh, you know, something in the main event where we're getting 13 or 14 to one. Okay, so let's just kind of get through this, and we're gonna you're gonna see the way I go through this is not your, your normal type of MMA analysis. I do some DFS stuff as well, which is a little bit more pure. But this is again singularly designed to figure out where the public is, figure out what logical thing we could do aside from that, and uh, and we're definitely gonna have some fun. And you are gonna see me bet every one of these fights right here. Anyway. So starting off, we have Charles Johnson against Rafael Estevam, and everybody's really just kind of sure what's going to happen here. So Estevam is going to be going for, for takedowns, and you know if he can get them and he can keep Charles Johnson down, then he's going to win, right? Uh, and, and Charles Johnson, he's probably the better striker, so if he can stuff the takedowns, it's going to be him. So basically... You know, Charles Johnson, his method of victory is probably either a late round finish or maybe by decision. So if those are the most likely outcomes for him, those are probably the the the, the sides that are be betting the most. So you can't really play that. Uh, Esteban, just to be able to hold Charles Johnson down, um, leading to a decision, that's probably going to be the most likely way people play that. So if you really want to play anything here, you're going to have to either play like either Charles Johnson early or maybe Estevam uh, inside the distance. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at some of these, uh, some of these lines here. We have, uh, first of all, we have, let's look at Estevam inside the distance. Estevam inside the distance is plus 350. It's looked pretty reasonable. And what about if we went Charles Johnson early just for the hell of it? Charles Johnson, like in round one or something like that. Uh, where do we find that? Round props. Johnson round one is plus 800. Um, that's very tempting. I have to say, that's very tempting. The other thing we could just do is play this fight to go inside the distance. Okay, because if we're looking for a whether it's Johnson round one or Esteban round, you know, inside the distance, why don't we just go the whole fight inside the distance? Because then we're just getting that Johnson round three thing, which I don't know, are people playing that plus 1800? I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know. So there's the whole, the whole, the, the, all the Charles Johnson props are just kind of, are kind of annoying to me. So we're just going to play. Esteban by TKO or submission. Inside the distance, plus one. Uh, moving on, we have Trey Ogden versus Nicholas Mota. So uh, Nicholas Mota, he is a you know, he's a striker, but he is low volume, um, and you know Trey Ogden is probably going to frustrate him. So if Mata can get him out of there early, that's probably his method of victory. If this goes you know to a decision, it's going to be Ogden kind of wearing on him, maybe getting for some takedowns. So again, those are probably the, the 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 sides that you can't bet. I mean, you can't bet Moda inside the distance. Uh, you can't bet him round one. I think that's probably way overvalued. And Ogden by decision is probably going to be atrocious. So you can either play Ogden by you know early something like that to be a little contrarian, or better, you could probably play Moda in uh, by decision. I think that's more responsible. So let's do that. Moda by decision plus two fifty for one. As a matter of fact. We're, 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 we're running this one back, back again. We played Moda by decision, I think, this last fight, and he lasted a full 45 seconds. So let's see, let's see if we do a little bit better here. Uh, Lucio Putilova versus uh, Aline Perez. Um, all right, so Aline Perez is very aggressive. She went for 15 takedowns in her last fight, and she's going to be all action. And she's probably going to be overwhelming Pudalova. Um, so her inside the distance, her by submission or something. Like, these these are all things that have been well, you know, well analyzed and well accepted. Um, and if in fact she cannot get that done, it's possible that she gasses. 
it's possible that Pudalova, if she can stuff the takedowns, maybe she gets there late. Um, so that's really all you're getting from the Pudalova side. So again, like if you want to be contrarian in this fight, you're going to probably play Perez by decision. Or if you're really feeling saucy, you could play Pudalova by uh, maybe first round or something like that. Because I don't think many people are playing that. And unfortunately, someone ruined it for me because I went to one of the podcasts I really respect. And someone came on and said that Pudalova is going to and knock out Perez in the first round because I'm such a freaking glutton for contrariness. I can't even play that now. So we're going to play Perez by decision. Um, and that's going to be just a plus 110. I mean, I don't, it doesn't seem very, doesn't seem like a lot of juice, but this is, this just, no one seems to have been recommending this. So we're going to do it. Uh, Perez by decision plus 110 for 180. And that's the thing about being a chair. It doesn't mean you're pay, playing huge long shots. It means you're just betting stuff that that it, that that other people have not been analyzing in, in you know to death. And I think the Perez by decision thing has just been kind of ignored. All right, so let's uh, Jekka Saragi versus Lucas Alexander. So I mean, this is to me this is a, uh, a recency bias special. You have Saragi. It's a, it's a recency bias plus MMA math. So Jekka Saragi, he uh, fought in uh, Jubilee, and he got wasted like the second round. And then Jubilee in his last fight got slaughtered. I would say slaughtered. He got he got he got overwhelmed in the third round by Mike Breeden. So basically invalidated. Uh, it, it made that the the, uh, the Jekka loss did not age well. And now uh, through all the content this week, it's just that. Jekka is bad. That's it. It's, he's the worst. He's the worst, but he was freaking plus one. He was like minus one ten in his fight against Jubilee. I don't know what the problem is. So we're gonna we're gonna take Serengi plus the four hundred um, for one week. Uh, okay, moving on. We have Mick Parkin versus Chai Machado. Uh, Kyle Machado. Um, all right, so. Sloppy heavyweight fight. That's what I'm hearing. Um, I'm hearing that Mick Parkin, you know, is 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 now. Well, not they're saying it now, but they're really hyping up the fact that he's been working with Tom Aspinall, uh, both being from Britain. And this is why he got a little bit of juice in his last fight. He was kind of a popular underdog in his last fight, and he did he did well enough. Um, and now that what's his name is one Aspinall is one, it's even it's, it's even more important that Mick Parkin is trains with Tom Aspinall. So that's, that's, that's going to be good enough for me. I'll take Chai Machado plus the 180, excuse me, plus 300 for 180. All right. We have uh, Christian Leroy Duncan versus Dennis Tullulian. Um, Okay. Short notice replacement. Uh, Dennis Tullulian kind of brings the heat. He takes a lot of punishment. Okay. Um, he's very, very tough to finish. And Christian Leroy Duncan is not exactly the best finisher in the world. So if anything, I, you know, I think that the, the Leroy Duncan by second round and third round, you know, is probably what people are going to be betting more of. I don't think anybody's really playing the Tolulian side. I think that's probably live, but I just think this line they just threw in there just to get people to play Tolulian. So we're just going to go the opposite. We're going to take a shot, and this feels like really, really dirty, but we're going to play um, Tululi, uh Duncan in round one. We don't know exactly what the price is yet, okay, because this is not out yet. But whatever it is, I think that's what people are not playing. So we're going to play Christian Leroy Duncan in round one. All right. Uh, we did that one. We did that one. We did that one. Chad Ellinger versus Jose Johnson. So – the problem here is that Chad Ellinger, his path to victory is probably by grappling. And the thing is that Jose Johnson, I mean, he's just way too long and way, you know, he, he has much bigger reach and, and Chad Ellinger is not going to probably be able to get to him. Not to mention the fact that Chad Ellinger is 37 years old. And then, you know what? Father time is undefeated, but you know, we're going to be biased here. He, he fought my friend, my, friend, my poker friend, uh, Terrence Chan, uh, back when Terrence Chan was doing more MMA and, uh, you know, I, we're we're gonna take a shot. We're we're we're, we're gonna say that Father Time will not be undefeated. Um, we're gonna take a shot against Father Time with Chad Ellinger, 
We're going to say that the takedowns do get there, and we're just going to play him plus the one set. We're going to fight. We're going to deal with the reach advantage. We're going to deal with all of it. We're just going to take Ellinger plus the one set. All right. We have uh, Jonathan Pierce versus Joe Anderson Brito. So this one is pretty clear. All right. Joe Anderson Brito is going to either get Jonathan Pierce out of there in round one, Right. Or Pierce is going to take over and either get an easy decision or submit Brito in round two or three. So uh, those are the very clear binary outcomes. And as a result, those are the things that we can't bet. So what we can bet is we have to choose. We could either play Pierce in round one. Or if you're really, really feeling saucy, something like Brito by decision. What do you think's more? What do you think's a better price? Pierce round one or Brito by decision? Well, let's find out. Pierce round one is uh, plus 380. Uh-oh. Uh, I know what Pierce, I know that's not going to be as big as, uh, that's not going to be as big as uh, Brito by decision. We'll take a look. Brito died by decision plus 700. Let's go. Let's go. Stuff the takedowns, do enough. I will also throw one other thing in, by the way. I, if you want. I mean, this could be like one of those fights where you can get 50 to one on a draw and take it. Because like Brito, if he gets like two knockdowns in the first round, but doesn't get Pierce out of there, and then Pierce comes back, that could be a draw. But we're going to play this one. This one has no chance. To win. So plus 700. I love the no chance to win ones. Uh, this was this was like the Trevor Peak one. Like there's no way he was going to win by decision. So, well, you know what? I don't I don't mean no way. I just need to happen one out of seven times. So plus 180, excuse me, plus 700 for 180. All right. We have uh, Uros Medic versus uh, Ural Body. Uros Medic, come, it's so funny. Like in his last fight, I think we were the only ones that took him. We were the big contrarians there because 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 uh, the Alaska fight scene was apparently like really dead. And if you're from Alaska, you were just forced to lose. Um, so we, I think, were the only people that took Medich in like the entire civilized world. And we got there. Third round, Alaska. Let's go. Uh, here he was scheduled to fight somebody else, and he was replaced by Earl By. Um, uh, it's a tough one to call because we don't have the benefit of the whole week to process. Okay. Um, so I don't really know which way the, uh, which way the, uh, the public is leaning on this. One. So unfortunately what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to either pass. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Or we're just going to have to go with what we kind of feel on this one. And I do feel as though that and this is like really stupid, I guess, but the, but, but the, the name of the new guy, um, and, and people remembering that Medich was from Alaska and he was bad or something, or Alaska was bad. I do think that the Aurel by side is probably the overvalued side. So if anything, I would play Medich. And then if you wanted to really be contrarian, I do think that people believe that Medich is going to win only by KO. So what I would recommend, what I am going to do is I'm going to play Medich by decision. And I don't know what that's going to be yet. It's got to be a lot. And it's got to be something nobody is playing. So uh, we're going to do that. Whatever Medich by decision is, since that has no chance to win, we're going to play that. All right. Uh, Luana Pinheiro versus Amanda Hibas. Um. It's it's okay. So this is this is the, what the deal is. He boss is pretty much the consensus to win this fight. The only thing that I've seen though is that he boss might have cardio issues and is somewhat hittable. So the people that are betting the Pinheiro side are there's a little bit more of a lean towards her by KO than just by decision. So if I was going to bet the Pinheiro side, the only thing I would probably do is bet her by decision. Um, the the he boss low cardio thing um 
I don't know about that. So, so if, if she, her cardio is not great, maybe something like her in round three might be the contrarian way to go again. You got to think about this. You think about what, what the public is really getting into. And I think that on this particular fight, they have this perception that he boss is going to get the takedowns and kind of just get to the decision or Pinheiro is going to get that KO somehow. So I think, okay, okay, I, 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 we worked this out. It's either going to be, we're either going to be he boss inside the distance in some way or Pinheiro by decision. So let's see what's better. Uh, Pinheiro by decision plus 550. He bus inside the distance winning method. He bus inside the distance is plus 275. But I think that we could be more risky here. I think her by submission. Well, look at this. By submission is plus 350. And by TK or submission is plus 275. Boy, this is this. I got to tell you, this is a real tough one to call. This is a real. We'll, we'll just play her inside the distance. We'll we'll keep the we'll keep the KO in play here. Um, let's see. Uh, where, where is that? Key bus by TK or submission. Two seven five. Okay. Moving on, we have Payson Talbot versus Nick Aguirre. Um, he's coming in as a minus 700 favorite. And I've actually seen a couple of people make the case for Aguirre because Talbot has not been able to stuff takedowns. Um, and maybe Aguirre just makes it last a little bit. So this is going to be probably a weak take but i am going to actually suggest that the talbot side is actually undervalued and it should probably be more like minus 20 to you know, 2000 so the question of how to play it though i do think the people that are playing talbot are playing in first round so what we're going to take a shot here is we're going to play talbot round two um i think that's i don't think that many people are doing that i think that talbot by decision is actually somewhat interesting but Talbot by the citizens is only plus 130. I mean, that looks pretty awful, doesn't it? So we're just gonna play him in round to win in round one. Okay, let's just let's just presume that the that that the guy is in fact the nuts and he gets him out of there. Oh, sorry, we said we said uh round two. So uh I I don't want to I don't want to resort to just TKO though. I want to go by the actual round because maybe he gets a submission. Talbot round two plus 450. We're going to do that one. All right. Uh, just a couple of more here. I think. Yeah, we have uh, three more. Let me just text. It's going to be a couple of minutes late. All right, so Chase Hooper versus Mike uh, Jordan Levitt. Boy, this is like, again, this is to me is just kind of a, a recency bias kind of 101 here. I mean, Chase Hooper was going into his last fight and he was coming off getting just the crap beat out of him. And they actually played this Nick Fiore guy to win and, and Hooper Hooper got the best of him. And all of a sudden, Hooper's being like talked about like he's the second coming or whatever. They're talking about how his striking is really good. It was just that one fight against um, Fiore that he had good value. I mean, the guy was very, very inconsistent. And you have Jordan Levitt, who is, you know, who who is just not the type of guy people like to play. And I don't know where people are going to learn the lesson. They're going to go right back to Hooper. We're going we're gonna to go the other side here. All the public is really on the Hooper side. It was like at Levitt earlier in the week. But people are like, well, I know that people want to play Levitt, but Hooper is just better and he's younger and the whole thing. I don't know how Levitt wins. I don't care how Levitt wins. I, we're going to play Levitt plus the 170, just like that, for 180. All right. Uh, Michael Morales versus Jake Matthews. Um, Michael Morales has Jake Matthews covered everywhere. 
I don't know how Jake Matthews is going to win. Um, and, and yet the line is only like minus two eight. It's not as if it's like minus 10,000. Um, so we are, we have to take the shot with Jake Matthews here. Um, I will say that if you are going to play Michael Morales, it's probably, I wouldn't even know which way to play him, you know, cause I've ha- heard some takes that, that he's a little bit boring uh, from his last fight, but then I've heard that people, he's going to be trying aggressive to try to show out. I wouldn't even know how to play Michael Morales if I were going to play him. But one thing I know I can do is I could play Jake Matthews here. You know, he's got a path to victory. Um, he could get takedowns. And so I'm just going to play him plus the two four because he's covered everywhere. But yet he's only plus 240. These other guys that are covered everywhere are plus 500. He's got to have something, right? All right, and then we have – we're at the main event. So let us review the atrocious bets that we made or are going to make uh, on this card and review all the incredible logic. So we have Estevam, who, listen, if he gets his takedowns, he's going to grind out a decision. Why we're betting him to finish is beyond me, plus 350. So that's a loser. Nicholas Moda, he either gets him out of there in round one, according to the public, or – uh, Ogden wins a boring decision, so Mata by decision. But it's, again, it's much better to throw it in the trash can, but we're doing this anyway. Aline Perez, miss, miss aggressive. Worse, if she doesn't get there, she gasses out. Hope not, because we need her to win by decision at what looks like an atrocious plus 110. Jekka Sarig is just awful. I mean, his, his win against, he lost to Jubilee, who came back to lose. I mean, I don't know why he's still in the UFC. Plus 400, we'll find out. Hi Machado against Mick Parkin. Why would you want to bet against someone who's in uh, what's his name's uh, Tom Aspinall's camp, especially coming off of that nice win? I mean, it seems ridiculous to me. So why am I only getting plus three hundred? Seems stupid. So we're doing it. Chad Ellinger plus the one seventy. Father Time is undefeated. How about he loses one? How about that one? Uh, Joe Anderson Brito. This is going to be a banger. If, if Brito does not get him out of there round one, though, Jonathan Pierce is the master of putting the pace on you. And he's going to get you out of there in round two or three, or at the very worst, make a decision. So I don't know who in their right mind would play Brito plus 700 by decision, but we got one of them. Amanda Rebos. So this is one is whatever. I mean, it's it's probably just going to just grind out a decision uh, or, or you'll have Pinheiro maybe get that KO. I don't know why we have playing Rebos inside the distance here, but plus 275. Again, it beats, beats throwing money in the trash. I guess. I don't know. Peyton Talbot, um, he's either gonna, he's either a fraud or he isn't. So he's probably either gonna get a Geary out of there in round one, or maybe go all the way to decision. So I think the round two prop is particularly terrible. So we're gonna play that one. Uh, Chase Hooper, I mean, listen, he's obviously worked out all of his issues. He's now a good striker and a good wrestler. I mean, who wants to play Jordan Levitt? Watch him twerk. Well, we'll try it. Plus one seventy. Uh, Jake Matthews is covered everywhere by Michael Morales. So we're going to play him. So now we are, and we have those two fights that we don't even know what the odds are going to be that we're going to be, be, be playing. Um, and I'll let you go back and remember what those were. Um, let's go back. It would be, uh, we're going to be playing Medich by decision. And the, oh, and the Leroy Duncan in round one, right? And then, so in the main event, we have to come up with something that's 13 to one. And the, the good thing is it's pretty easy here. So no matter how many times people, you know, claim that, well, you know, Paul Craig, I mean, you know, you got to gotta watch out for him. He's, he's live. People still bet against him every single fight. Like Andrew Muniz, the people bet against him, they bet on him there. So people do kind of presume that if Allen minds his P's and Q's, he kind of can just take care of Paul Craig. Basically any bet with, with Allen inside the distance, it's probably bad, except for the real late ones. Because Paul Craig late is something that people have been talking about, like with Craig by sub. So what we can probably do is find at least a random round to play um, to play Allen. And for example, we could play Brandon Allen in like round four, like plus twelve to one. Uh, it's not exactly. Not exactly the uh, the odds that we want. We have to go to round five plus two thousand. 
All right, let's do it. Brandon Allen, round five, plus 2,000. And here, I'm not going to look at anything else because last time I, I, I got off of this stuff, it ended up uh, – I ended up, like, clicking off the right one. So we're going to go Brandon Allen, round five. Paul Craig's going to fight, 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 but eventually Allen will get him. We're going to be playing all these fights, including the two that we didn't put in yet, and uh, probably going to go 0-14. But listen, hopefully, again, you learn kind of how to analyze these things in a very contrarian way, and uh, uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.